Good morning. Uh, welcome you to day uh, 17 of Lent. Uh, this is uh, my 16th devotional. Um, and uh, just a, a reminder that uh, our focus for this uh, devotional series is uh, looking at the life of Jesus at the different things that he did, did the different things that he taught, and um, uh, asking the question, how does what he did and taught, uh, how, how can we uh, incorporate that into our lives to make us more uh, Christ-like? Because that's what it's all about. It's not being about us being better Christians, but it's about us being more uh, like Christ? How can we be transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit um, uh, into the image of Christ? The reading from the last uh, devotion I did, which was, was on Saturday, uh, is from uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And um, uh, there's, there's sort of the, the part before the Samaritan that explains why Jesus uh, gives uh, that uh, parable or story. Um, and, and a big part of that was, uh, uh, appears to me to be self-justification. Uh, the lawyer um, who was asking the question uh, was wanting to uh, justify uh, himself, uh, that he was someone who had uh, fulfilled all the things that Jesus said he, would, he should have fulfilled. Um, and I think um, there is a, a lesson in that for us, uh, recognizing that, that uh, no matter how good we think we have been, uh, no matter how uh, much we think we have followed the teachings of Jesus, there are going to be times when we do. Um, this story is uh, about um, the man asks, uh, Jesus has said uh, to love your neighbor as yourself, and the man wants to know who his neighbor is. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of times we want to we want to define our neighbors are, as the people that are right around us that we uh, know and like or love. And, and uh, uh, Jesus doesn't doesn't go along with that. In this case, um, we discover that uh, the neighbor um, that that people are supposed to be uh, loving and helping uh, winds up being a. Well, it isn't going to be the person that we think it is. Um, you know, the, the, the one person who appears to be a Jew has been beaten and robbed uh, and left for dead on the side of the road uh, between Jerusalem and, and Jericho. And um, three different people pass by. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, a, a teacher of the law. Um, let's see. Uh, the one is a priest, one is a Levite, and there's you know some difference between them, but they're both religious leaders, uh, and both of them um, choose to go on the other side. Uh, it, it obviously, very ob very obviously, uh, their thoughts are more on uh, the impact this will have on them. It will make them unclean. Uh, it's just something they don't want to do, uh, and so they leave the person for dead. And then we get um, the fact that, that the third person that, that's going to come is the Samaritan. Uh, and the Samaritan man doesn't, uh, doesn't care that the guy is, is a Jew. I mean, and how they would know that, I don't know. Um, but he's moved with pity, we're told. Uh, he bandages his wounds, pours oil on him, and wine, oil and wine on the wounds, uh, puts him on his own animal takes him to the local inn, has the innkeeper take care of him, pays for all of it. And, um, and then Jesus wants to know who is the, who is the actual uh, uh, neighbor. Uh, and, and in terms of the loving, the neighbor, who, who is, I, I think really what the question is, is who, who of those three people are fulfilling the, uh, the, the requirement or, or the uh, you know, requirements, a good one, uh, that we are to uh, love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. Well, the first two handle the first part, I guess, of loving God. Uh, but in terms of the loving the neighbor, 
the one that did that was the Samaritan. And uh, for, for Jews, uh, having the Samaritan uh, be someone that um, was the one that was uh, uh, really doing that which they were called to do by God, uh, and I would say by Christ, uh, was sort of an uh, embarrassment. Uh, because Samaritans were not as seen as good of people as Jews. And yet here is uh, a story that extols the actions of, of a Samaritan. Um, and so I think that, that the, the challenge to us on this um, is, is to remember um, that, number one, I think, is to remember that uh, while there is the requirement, of course, to love God, and I think that you know, we, we as the church, uh, I think all Christian churches uh, are very big on the loving God. We, we do that very, very well. Um, but sometimes the loving neighbor uh, doesn't, doesn't work out so well. Uh, I think many times, uh, and, and you know, when we say the church, uh, we really mean us. We mean the individuals within the church. Um, we, we like our neighbors. We, want, we love our neighbors as long as they're just like us as long as they look like us, as long as they believe the same thing we do, as long as they act like us. Um, and, and I think that what we have to remember is uh, that, that um, there is no qualifications on the term neighbor. Uh, we as Christians are called to love our neighbors, uh, be they um, uh, Anglo, be they African American, Hispanic, uh, Asian American, uh, Native American, any kind of any 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 race, uh, color, um, it doesn't matter uh, whether they are um, United Methodist, whether they are uh, Baptist, whether they are Assembly of God, whether they are are agnostic, whether they are atheist, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they are rich or poor. Uh, we are called to love all of our neighbors and 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 i think that this this uh while it, it the parable gives that but it also goes a step further and says is that is that it's not just a thing of loving them with your heart it's a thing of loving them with uh, action that love is not just a, an emotion love is an action loving love is helping take care of uh, uh, people that need help uh, you know, taking care of and doing doing what, all that you can to help them. Uh, we had a uh, situation this morning when we got to the office. There was a, a phone message from a woman that had gotten out of, out of the hospital just, I think, this weekend. And she didn't have food. And she didn't have any way of getting food. She lived in Kenta. Um, and she was wondering if there's any way we could help her get food. Um, you know, uh, even technically, uh, we might even say she's not our neighbor because she doesn't live in, in Stigler, um, but we had, you know, we have emergency food. Uh, we uh, put together a, a package of emergency food. We had some people that were here, some of the women that were here with the UMW, uh, were willing to, to go over and take it to her. Uh, and to me, that's, that's love in action. That's how we, we uh, show the world uh, that we are Christ followers, that we love uh, our neighbors is by how we act and what we do for them. And so uh, I think that if, if we want to be like Christ, uh, not only do we uh, not only do we love those that are different from us, but we put that love into action. Um, let me go ahead and let's have a, a word of prayer uh, before I do the reading for today. Most Holy God, uh, we do give you thanks for this. Uh, thank you for this uh, truly uh, inspirational story. Uh, you know, it, it's real easy to find stories of people, oh, sorry, uh, of people that um, love those that are just like them. Um, but to find a story of someone who loves and acts upon that love uh, for someone that's very different uh, is, is uh, an important thing. And help us to internalize that. Help us to realize uh, that we're called not just to love those that are like us, but we're called to love all people, uh, especially those that are not like us. 
uh, and that we're called not just to love them with uh, uh, an emotion in our heart, but we're called to love them by putting that love into action. And uh, I thank you for um, the ladies of the church here that uh, put that action into love uh, and, and pray, oh God, that we might always uh, be able and willing to do those things uh, whenever we can. Um, we pray, oh God, and thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, the word that we have been given, the gospel story of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is truly the word, um, the word that was there in the beginning and, and that was a part of creation and as a part of your ongoing presence in our world. And I uh, just pray, oh God, that we will hear uh, the story you have for us today and uh, that we will, uh, uh, we will study it and be able to uh, determine how it can affect uh, our lives uh, as we move forward trying to be more Christ-like. Uh, we pray all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. So our reading for today is, is not a very long reading this time. Uh, in fact, it's only about four verses. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a reading that comes right after the story of the Good Samaritan. Um, and uh, it, it's, it, it's people that we know. Uh, I don't think at this point we have not been introduced to them in, in our readings yet uh, that we've done here. But we know them well in, in, uh, uh, if we know the Bible. Uh, this is from Luke uh, chapter 10, and it is the next verses 38 through 42. And uh, this is the, the story of Jesus uh, with Mary and Martha. Uh, hear, hear the gospel, hear the story, hear, hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, as they went on their way, and so this is Jesus and, and his disciples and other hanger on or there's, you know, there's a group. Um, he entered a certain village and, and uh, the text here doesn't give us the name of the village, but we know that the village actually is Bethany uh, because the people that, that uh, he's going to interact with are people that live in Bethany. So uh, we know that. Uh, he enters a certain village where there, uh, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Now, this appears that this is the first time Jesus has interacted uh, with Martha and her family. And so this is uh, early in that relationship. She, you know, we know that they'll become very, very good friends um, uh, and, and significant things happen there. Uh, but, but this is the first time. So Martha welcomes him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. Now, I'm going to just give you a little more background as we read this. Um, the sitting at the feet and listening is a sort of a discipleship um, uh, thing that you would do. And it's somewhat unusual for a woman to do this. Uh, this is typically something a man would do, uh, and a woman, while a woman would be more in the background and, and be, be doing things to, to take care of things. But, but Mary is sitting at uh, the feet of Jesus, uh, listening to what he is saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she's, Martha is busy trying to do all the things that, that uh, a woman in the house is supposed to do. Uh, the woman had, had all kinds of things of getting ready, getting a meal ready and, and, and just all kinds of things that she would have done. Uh, and, it, and it's probably not just Jesus that's there. It's, it's other disciples. And so there's a lot of people. Um, uh, so she is very distracted and, and frantic. And, and, um, but we did hear her say, uh, so she came to him and asked, Lord, so she's talking to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? And so she comes to Jesus complaining, if you will, about the fact that Mary basically abandoned her sister uh, so that her sister would do all the work. Um, 
And then she asked him to do something. Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. You have all of these other things going on in your life and in the world and trying to do this and dinner and all this, this kinds of things. And, and there is really only one thing um, that is of importance. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. As you go back, and, and, and we do know, obviously, from uh, the story, it doesn't tell us here, but we know that there actually is someone else in the family. They live with their brother, Lazarus. Uh, and uh, Lazarus will become big in, in the story later on, but as will Mary and Martha. Um, but I want you to um, go back and reread this again, uh, find a, a different translation, uh, see if there are any differences. Um, and, and think about this. I, I, I want you to think about this. Um, obviously, we're wanting to be more Christ-like, but, but that's not always the way. We don't always... Um, uh, we don't always get there by just looking at it through Christ's eyes. Uh, instead, of, instead, I want you to put yourself in the position of Martha and, and think about Martha in this story and, and all the things that come up about Martha. But also think about Mary. What is, what, you know, what is Mary thinking? What is Mary doing? Why is Mary doing what she's doing? You know, those things. Um, contempl- you know, think about those two different characters and the different ways they react. And, and then what do we learn from those? Because I think probably um, probably we learn from, from both. Uh, I mean, I think there's something to be learned from both of those. And so I would challenge you to do that, to, uh, to read the stories, reread the stories, uh, pray about them, uh, and, and, and think about them from uh, Mary's perspective, from Martha's perspective, and then, and then even a little bit from Jesus' perspective. Uh, you know what is it he um, what is it that he doesn't say uh, what is it that he does say why does he say what he says why does he not say what he doesn't say uh, you know, think of all those things and, and we'll deal with all those tomorrow as well uh, I pray that you have a, a great Monday uh, I will see you tomorrow as we uh, hit day 18 of Lent and uh, just pray that you're having a uh, a blessed time of preparing uh, for uh, the coming of uh, Holy Week, uh, of uh, that that horrible event we know is Good Friday, but uh, the fact that, that that Sunday is coming, that Easter is coming. So just uh, just pray that you have a very blessed day. Amen.